Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Johanna. I'm so excited to do this video today because I've been waiting for this little baby to arrive. Not that kind of baby. <laughs> a ring. I've been waiting for the Atlantis ring to arrive for a couple of weeks now. It was getting stuck in customs. It's finally arrived. I've been wearing it for about a week. This ring is said to have functional properties that can help you be more in tune with your subconscious. Uh, it can help your body heal. Um, it can um, keep bad energies away from you. And it actually has some kind of functional energy shielding powers. Um, anyway, I thought I'd try it. it. sounded amazing. So here's how it went. Okay, wait, first off, first off, what is it? What is the Atlantis ring? So the Atlantis ring or the Luxor ring or the Egyptian ring, I think it's also called, is a ring that was found in a grave in 1860. And the grave was super old. It was the grave of an ancient Egyptian priest called Jua. And it was from the second dynasty. So it's literally like one of the oldest dynastic Egyptian graves that there is. What is unusual about this ring is it has sacred geometry, uh, like in the design of the ring. So it's not just a fancy schmancy piece of gold, it is a functional thing. The design of this ring is at least 5,000 years old. It is a very ancient design. Don't We don't really know a lot about it, like let's be honest, but I've done some digging and I've found what I can. I'm gonna let you know everything that I know about the Atlantis ring and why it's called the Atlantis ring. Story time. So in 1860, French Egyptologist called Marquis d'Argren. I don't know if I said that right. He was doing an excavation in Valley of the Kings and yeah, he found this priest's tomb and he found this ring. Now it was passed down, uh, I think in his family, a couple of generations, cause it was a pretty cool ring. Um, the original ring, was the original ring was not made of metal, interestingly enough. The original ring was made out of stone, which is why it's like impossible to date and could be super, super old. Let's show you the original ring. Here is the original ring, apparently made of as, well, I've heard that it's made of Aswan clay. I've also heard it's made of Aswan sandstone. So it's a stone slash clay ring. And here's the original guy. Um, I think the ring today is in like a private, it's, it's in a private collection. It's owned by family. So unfortunately, like we can't go and see it and check it out, but there's an original photo of it. The guy who found the ring, kept the ring, passed it down a few generations. And then it was his grandchild, I believe in the 1920s called Andre de Beziel. Andre was a radius thesis, radius a radius thesis. Basically, that's a person who studies energy frequencies and how energy reacts from objects and humans and they basically study, study energy. And he noticed that the ring had effects on its environment and the person wearing it, um, like tangible, marketable, you could measure, measurable, that's the one I'm looking for. It had a measurable effect uh, within its own environment. That was pretty cool. Um, now I'm not sure whether he gave the ring or whether he like he loaned the ring or whether he gave a replica ring to Howard Carter, who was one of the famous Egyptologists in the 1920s who helped to discover the Tutankhamun tomb um, in Valley of the Kings. Anyway, here's where the story gets a little bit saucy. So Howard Carter wearing either a replica or the original ring goes into the tomb of Tutankhamun the Pharaoh which by the way, had a plaque above the tomb, which literally said, don't go in this tomb or else you're gonna die. There was like a curse on the tomb. In fact, it said, death will strike with its wings, those that touch the Pharaoh, um, or something to that effect. Out of all the people who went into the tomb to like excavate uh, Tutankhamun's tomb, like a lot of people died. 
like a lot of people. They say different amounts, but it's somewhere between 18 to 24 people died within like two years or a couple of years after going into this tomb, except Howard Carter. And he believed, like firmly believed that the ring was the reason why he was like exempt from the curse. Uh, they started to look at this ring a little bit more closely and do more tests on it. And then some French dude, he wrote a book about his findings. This book, nope, that book, <laughs> that book <laughs> called, or essay of the vibratory, I don't know, that thing in French. But this book was all about the findings of the ring and um, what they measured that it could do. He also worked out um, that you could stretch the ring out and make it flat like a brick, like a bar, which they call the Luxor bar. Here it is, here it is. Okay, so let's just talk about this thing for a second. Can I make it bigger? Oh, I can, great. Um, nope, dropped it, there we are. So he translated, this is the, um, this is the original ring. This is the Luxor bar that they were doing tests on. And this is like the modern day replicas that you can get. There we are. So he, he did that. Actually, I have not just a ring. They also gave me a free um, Luxor bar, which you can put as like a keychain or you can wear it as like a pendant. Um, I'll show you. Which apparently this was um, colored by light frequencies. That's how they got the color into this metal. Do I have my little piece of paper? No, I am prepared for this video. Um, so they started to notice that the bar had, uh, or and the ring, had these frequencies that could affect the environment around it. Um, um, here's a little picky there of, um, that looks like the sacred, that looks like the, what's it called? Come on, Johanna. Brain. The golden ratio, right? No. Yeah, that spirally thing. Okay, so I got some like leaflets when I got my ring, which is a gold, a 10K gold replica. The ring and the certain objects with the Luxor symbol when properly crafted will work like an antennae, receiving and transmitting powerful waves that help transmute harmful energies. And through the waves, it can help manifest a strong, subtle energy field that will uh, protection, energy healing and enhanced intuition. I had to try it, I had to order it. So I went online, there's loads of different places that you can buy replica rings. I found one, I think it was atlantis.net. She was like a Reiki, Reiki master and she seemed to be, um, she does a lot of the designs with like a CAD machine. So it's, the geometry is like on point. Um, and I was looking at all the reviews and a lot of people said that they could feel some stuff. So I was like, let's do this in the name of science. Oh no, didn't finish the story. Didn't finish the story. So um, I was looking all over the internet, trying to find out why this is called the Atlantis ring. And there's no like firm information, but the kind of the law, the, the myth, the legend is that Egyptian priests in the early, early dynastic, uh, dynasties. So the early dynastic Egyptian priests used to be the wisdom keepers and the like history keepers and the mystery keepers of the whole Kamishan people. Um, they were the people that spoke to Solon like thousands of years later and told Solon all about the history of the Egyptian people, where they came from. It is in their tradition that they believe that they came from survivors of an island that disappeared in a cataclysm. Literally, it's on the Temple of Edfu, it, and they are the people that told uh, Solon about Atlantis. These are this Egyptian priesthood. So the Egyptians had knowledge of technologies and traditions that came from the original civilization before the dynastic Egyptians came to power. So it makes sense that this was found in an Egyptian priest's tomb. So it was obviously very special, it obviously meant something and it makes sense that it could have been passed down, especially if it was made of stone. This thing could be like the original ring. It could be 10,000 years old. It's 5,000 years old, at least because of the tomb that we found it in. But because it's stone, I mean, that, that stuff lasts forever. You, it, could, it could be 12,000 years old. Or it could be a replica of a ring of a ring of a ring. Maybe they had a function. Also, I remember a um, one of the guides in Egypt when we were at Edfu and I was trying to find the text talking about Atlantis. And he mentioned weirdly that the symbol, the, the, pyra the point pyramid symbol and the pyramid shape came from the island of the original civilization. They brought that to ancient Egypt 
from before. Venomous shape is the holy shape for the Egyptian people. But why? Because the Egyptian people also uh, imagined this shape it was in the islands. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why this shape or the venomous shape is the holy. And uh, also in the island, the obelisk is starting there. So anything that's like super angular, pyramid, that kind of megalithic stuff, he's, he claimed came from before. And the shapes that are on this, it's, it's like a obelisk. It's the same kind of shape of an, of an obelisk. It does seem to be sort of, seems to be in the shape of an antenna. See, here we go. Here's what we're talking about. It looks like a kind of bent, if you're gonna melt an obelisk and like bend it over, that's kind of what that would look like. I heard, I read another sort of oral tradition about um, when there was a cataclysm, a lot of the um, priests were evacuating somewhere and that this was the ring that was left behind and this was an Atlantean priest who then left the ring in the hands of the what was going to be the Egyptian priesthood so I think kind of that's where it came from so so there's there's no like direct evidence link that it's Atlantis but it's just picked up the name because it seems to have been an inherited object there's nothing like this in any other Egyptian jewelry. Like it's so precise, precision, sacred geometry. It just seems to align itself with like pyramid building, obelisk building, precision stone cutting. It lives in that world rather than the really ornate, colorful, curvy dynastic Egyptian stuff, like all their jewelry. Like this is, it doesn't seem to fit the narrative. I can see why people think it was older. Okay, so let's talk about my experience. Let's talk about wearing the ring and have I noticed anything? Have I got superpowers? So I've been wearing the ring for about a week now. And I also bought one for my close friend. Um, she is, I'm not, just to preface, I'm not a super spiritually in tune person. I am spiritual. I do believe in like higher powers and things, but, but I'm not someone who can like sense a ghost goes over my head. So I didn't know if I was going to be the best person to road test this. Um, but my friend is like super intuitive. Like she was definitely a witch in another life or something. Like she can dream things before they happen all the time. She's like, oh my God, I dreamt that last night. And it's like, she has like weird sixth sense matrixy stuff. She also thought the ring was really, really cool. So for her birthday, I gifted her one and I got one for myself. So we've both been wearing them for a week and we've been talking about our different experiences because they're different, but sometimes similar. First, the ring's like really heavy. It's quite like, it's quite a big design. I went for actually the, the small design. You can actually get it like even chunkier, but I think this is perfect for me because you know, dainty. So at first I was just trying to get used to this like weight of gold on my finger. And I didn't feel anything, like I put it on, I didn't feel anything like, ooh, like nothing to report back initially. As I was wearing it for a little while, I noticed that I felt calmer in situations that were that I'm normally quite anxious in. I noticed like a marked difference that I felt calmer. I'm sleeping better. I'm I'm going to sleep way more easily. I struggle to s go to sleep sometimes, especially if I'm sleeping alone, if my boyfriend's not there or um, up gaming or whatever. Um, I, I, I it can take me like an hour sometimes and I track my sleep on my watch so I can testify that I'm dropping to sleep quickly. Um, if I, if I get spooked in the night, if I have, I've got an overactive imagination, if I wake up, um, one of the like second nights I had this, I woke up and I thought I saw like a figure. There was like a dark shape in front of the curtain. And my immediate thought was, oh great. The ring makes me see ghosts. Like great. I'm now in tune with ghosts. And then uh, my, I was obviously like got a fright. And normally when I get spooked in the night, if I think I see a ghost or a murderer or something, it will again, it will take me a while to like calm down. I rolled over and I went straight back to sleep. And in the morning I, I registered that and went, oh my goodness, what? The second test came when I went into a situation which normally makes me physically anxious. So I went to this place. I normally have such a visceral strong reaction of anxiety that my stomach can be in pain um, when I leave. Went there, it was a stressful time yet my stomach wasn't in pain. I felt, I managed to, I was calm and I felt less anxiety, really weird. Third thing I noticed, I have ADD. Well, I've not been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I have ADD. And sometimes when I'm trying to focus, when I'm trying to work, especially when I'm trying to exercise, 
my brain just goes off like brrr, and I cannot focus. I find it so frustrating because half of my brain has like a, a goal. I want to finish this workout. The other half of my brain is going, oh, did you sweep the garden? Oh, you should put on some washing. We should, you need to stop and research this thing for YouTube. And my brain is just going all over the place. And so I did a workout routine, I've done two this week, and I didn't realize for seven whole minutes into this workout that I was just in it, I was just focused. It was only when I was interrupted by my boyfriend asking if he, like, he was going to the shop and he was like, do you want something? That was the, the t first time that I came out of it and I was like, oh my goodness, my brain can focus. That's crazy. Um, and again, I tested it again, I did a second workout and same thing, I managed to complete the workout without my brain going like spaghetti in all different directions. So I found that I do feel, maybe it's just the placebo effect, either way it's working. Either way, if it's the ring or if it's not, it's working. I found that it reduces my ADD, it reduces my physical symptoms of anxiety, helps me sleep, and I feel calm. And my friend who tried her ring, she said that she felt something way more instantly. Like the first night she had it, she was like, I feel really calm. Do you feel calm? And I was like, mm, yeah, kind of. It was only when I got into that, this normally stressful or um, triggering situations that I realized how calm I actually was. But she said she felt it straight away. She felt really calm. She's also a super anxious person full of anxious energy and she is again very similar to me ADD she can't focus on things she said she sat down and she wrote she did she had to do like um paperwork which is hideous who likes doing paperwork she said she had to do an hour of admin she did two and a half hours straight of admin and she she was like what is this ring what have you what what is this I she was like I could focus and then she had lunch and then she sat and she finished all the rest of the her work that she needed to do she was like, that never happens. For me, I would say I love it. I'm going to wear it. I'm definitely gonna wear it around, around Egypt because I'm going to Egypt in September. Um, I'm also going to Peru in November. Um, I will put all the links to all the trips and the bits. Actually, no, I think Egypt's now full, but Peru is definitely, there's tickets going for Peru. So if you wanna come to Peru with me, I'm gonna put that in the description box below. But I'm gonna be wearing this in all my travels because I do believe it keeps me calm and I do believe it helps me mentally. And um, yeah, so far so good. And definitely if I'm gonna be going down into like tombs and whatnot, you know, keep all the curses at bay. It doesn't seem to matter what material the ring is made from for it to still function the way it does. It's not to do with the material, it's to do with the shape and the sacred geometry. So um, you can get it in silver, you can get it in gold, you can get it in brass, you can get it in loads of different things. It doesn't have to be super expensive. I chose to get gold because I wear a lot of gold and I knew that I was gonna be wearing this ring like for life, so I invested in one. But if you wanna try one, you can also pick them up quite cheaply and give it a go for yourself. Well, there we are. There we are, the Atlantis ring. Did you know about it? It was quite hard to research because there was not a lot about it on the internet. So if you do know anything else about it, then please let me know. Uh, put it in the comments and I will see it. And um, yeah, let me know if I've missed out anything because uh, I, I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm feeling very precious <laughs> about it. Cool. I think that's everything. So if you got to the end, Thank you very much. I try and make videos every week if I can. Uh, I'm doing stuff, I'm doing armchair archeology span for the moment, but things are starting to open up now in the world and I'm going to Egypt in September, I've already mentioned that. I'm going to Peru in November. Um, I'm trying to get out and see Randall when America's working, like the border, but we'll see, we'll see. I need to go now, uh, bye bye. <laughs>